Hi Scorpio, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your April 2022 mid-month tarot reading. This is a reading for all Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Thanks to all of you for all the support. I send you love and much appreciation every single day. And if you are new here, welcome to you. I post new readings on Friday, then again on Monday. So if a reading doesn't resonate, come back in a couple of days. You can watch a new reading. It's always somebody's reading, not always everyone's. However, I will say with that, you attract these readings. Have you ever thought of that? So there may be some gem in a reading that is meant for you, or it could be energies that you just aren't in right now. They're attracting, and so they may seem like this doesn't sound like me, but you may find, oh, it is. And um, anyway, Fridays are a general reading. Mondays are a different style every week. So today's reading will be a more detailed Celtic cross style reading. Next week, it'll be a different style entirely. So if you like tarot and you like the channel, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to Higher Source Tarot. What advice do you have for Scorpio? Sun, moon rising and venus what does scorpio need to know please for the best and highest good of all concerned with scorpio messages for scorpio please all right so we will start here with the tarot and then we'll have the angel answers i'm gonna leave that as a clarifier let's see what it is okay <laughs> i had to it just seemed like the natural thing to do Current situation, Jesus, we've got the Ten of Swords, Ten of Wands. I'm glad to see those in that position. You've got the Queen of Wands in your subconscious. Ooh, that's a cool, th this is really a cool alignment. You've got the Empress in the distant past, the Emperor in the energy right after it. That, that's three and four in the order of the deck. We have 78 cards here. Do you know how statistically improbable that is? The energy coming towards you is the Sun. You're represented by the Three of Wands. You have the Strength card. In the person or situation you're attracting, the Six of Cups and your hopes and fears, the Fool and the Outcome. What an absolutely glorious reading. I love this. I am so excited to get to this reading. I cannot even tell you. Now, this the card that didn't go with the rest of them was the Tower. So we have here five major arcana. Okay, right? Two, four. No, we have six. Six major arcana. You have Leo, Aries. You have... Um, earth, air, fire, water, okay? Um, so with this, that that tower card is an awakening. That is a breakdown to have a breakthrough. It is a radical new life coming in, okay? So if something has, like I feel like with that seven of cups, there was something that you didn't fully trust. And I feel like that tower is here to show you. You know, it's like, show me, don't tell me universe, because guess what? Sometimes we put on those rose-colored glasses. And the Seven of Cups, that's the universe spirit telling you, take off the rose-colored glasses, Scorpio. But the tower will help with that because, you know, you see that lightning bolt that knocks off the, the crown of the ego. And I believe in some decks, um, this is called like life experience. In my angel tarot cards, the tarot's or the tower is called life experience. And so, of course, we know that's the best teacher of all. But whatever is is being removed there, you've asked for it. And I know that can be hard to hear. You know, our mind says one thing, but our heart whispers the truth and the universe will hear your heart. Now, what's interesting about this with the three of pentacles, there's your rebuilding phase. The universe won't remove something without bringing in something better. The three of pentacles is a great energy because it symbolizes something very harmonious, working together, being in synergy. So if it's a new relationship... Because you have a new beginning here with the Fool. I absolutely love that energy. You've got a very fresh, clean energy coming towards you with the Sun and the Fool. So I do feel like whatever happens there, it's all about bringing in new perspectives. The end of something, something delusions is basically it. The That overthrow of ignorance, because that's what the black represents. Something you didn't know, and it gets you out of that. And honestly, it's related to these two completely. So whatever these two tens are, they're trying to tell you this is over. The ten of swords, if it was a an energy of a job that was just taking your soul, you know, I see like, you know, when you put like a, a dome on a candle to put out the flame, it's like that kind of energy. Or if it was a relationship, 
that was just suffocating you. That's what it feels like, somebody just being suffocated by an energy in their life. The Ten of Swords are telling you it's time to be done with that. It's a very dramatic way of saying it, but again, that black in the cards. It's not only ignorance, but it also can be our shadow aspects. We want to embrace the shadow because it's our greatest guide into the light. And when we understand the shadow, we understand contrast and we understand ourselves better. Now that Ten of Wands, I feel like it may have been something you put a lot of effort into, especially if it's a relationship. You know this one, right? It's like a damn vending machine where you keep putting in more and more money and there's no attendant to get your money back. So you just keep going with it, right? Until you're shaking the machine or putting your arm up into the thing to get your item out. You know, it's that, but it's maddening. And it's time to be done with this, Scorpio, because you've got such better energy coming. So we've got the Queen of Wands in your subconscious. Your subconscious says that you deserve loyalty, that you deserve to be uh, somebody who grows in their career, the wands are upwardly mobile. So you're always making gains here. And it, you've got a wonderful creative source inside of you. And that's what this is about. Now, the queen of wands is like a, you know, boss lady. So man or male or female, it doesn't matter. It's like you being in this place of leadership, of having a high level of creativity, but also attracting people who are supportive. They're not after your job. They're not after you. They're not talking about you. I mean, it's really attracting those kinds of people. And you know what? We want that. We want to pay attention to the five people we spend the most time with. What are their lives like? Where? What are their ideas like? Are you afraid to tell them about your great ideas because you know that they're going to infuse some negative comment? Then those are, you've got to replace some of those. You've got to get five different people or some additional people, something, um, because we need to have uplifters that understand and aren't afraid of your great ideas. There's usually one in every five that we go, yeah, I wouldn't tell them. Um, but this also, too, in relationships, it's bringing in a high level of passion. I mentioned this, you know, in, back in the days when they drew these cards, they didn't have our lewd, lascivious 2022 minds. So they drew it with their knees apart to indicate, yes, that's exactly what it is. It's like a strong sexual chemistry. And that's kind of a thing that Scorpios are known for. I mean, I'm not trying to get too personal, but let's face it, you are. So you're wanting to attract that and that's okay, right? There's nothing wrong with it. Um, so in the distant past, I just love these two together. I have to point this out. It just makes me so happy whenever they appear, but right in order there. My God, I mean, I just love this. With the energy of the sun, it's like, you have like a match made in heaven here. And even though they have some differences, okay, they're meant to be together. There's no doubt about that. And what they do, they do for each other and they do for love. Now, this is both the mother and father of the tarot. Um, so it's a card of fertility. She also has her knees apart. So I'm just going to say that one more time. But you notice this waterfall that this begins in the um, gown of the high priestess and it carries over into the emperor's card because they're always connected. So I do feel like you have a very strong relationship here. The empress is a card of luxury though. So you're attracting new people around you, but you're attracting wealth too. And so you may find too, even in the last year, if you made some purchases, you or even if you made a shift where you've started to buy finer things, but maybe less of them, or that's been your mindset. Like I just rather have nicer things, but just not as many things that can be like the Empress too, where she just feels really good in wherever she is. And I know that's materialistic, but she is, you know, she's ruled by Venus. Yes. She's ruled by love, but she's also the creator of the material world. So there's all kinds of abundance, prosperity, wherever you go. Now, this is an energy too of um, you know, how do I want to say this? Decadent meals, wine, drinks. We have to be a little careful. So if a year ago, or maybe even a little more, if you put on some pounds, because there was too much eating and that sort of thing, that can be the empress energy. She, like I said, she's also per, uh, perpetually pregnant. Okay. So it also could be if you were pregnant, you were pregnant a year ago, or you had a baby a year ago, that's connected to this. Um, the emperor, of course, we know is the father of the tarot. Now, he's he is the opposite of the empress because she's very easygoing. She's the kind of energy that would drive on a flat tire and kind of not care. Whereas he's like, you know, almost pound your fist on the table kind of rules, authority. We've got to pay all the bills on time, get everything set up for, you know, a direct deposit and automatic renewal and all that stuff. 
Um, but what I like about this is it brings order into your life. So if you got a little loose with the Empress, you get back into being orderly here. It just is a wonderful balanced energy. Now, if it's somebody you're attracting to, it may be somebody too who's got a great job where they're very good at leading. I almost see somebody like in a fire department where it's like a, they lead like some kind of a crisis team or something. They'd be very good at that because they're very level-headed. Headed. This is somebody who uses a lot of intellectual prowess they use analytical skills and they're kind of not emotionally reactive. Like, honestly, this is the kind of person you want in an accident scene because they won't freak out. And it may just be their personality. Like you may say, no, they're the one that always goes. They've got, you know, they're an EMT. So anytime there's an issue, they go. And, you know, if it's a public place, you know, it's just very matter of fact, whoever this is, it's just part of who they are. But like I said, it is nobility. And I want to say too, he holds this staff because that represents Venus. And so he's always connected to his empress. So in a relationship, you have a very, you have an, a strong magnetism and an energetic connection to whoever you're attracting here. Well, we love the energy of the sun. It's gains, riches, and synergy. This is an absolute regeneration in your life. It's living a life beyond limits, a, a life without limits. It is feeling like you're on top of the world in the energy of the sun. It's an absolute beautiful new energy that comes in that brings true joy. And so this little androgynous child, it shows that you have a lot of power in a situation, but you wave that, that banner of victory. Um, so I do feel like if there's something financially to be gained here, this is where it comes in. It may just be a really solid month at work, especially if you have any kind of commissions. You'll find that you just are getting tons of new opportunities that way. Anything with commissions or just, like I said, if there's some fluidity in your income, this is going to bring it in. But it's very high vibrational energy. I have to point out too, you've got sunflowers in the energy of the queen of wands in your subconscious and you have them here too because you've got this magnetic pull on people. You have a vibration. When you walk into a room, people feel this. They feel the magnetism of it. And I will say with the synergy, you're going to know right away if you're attracting the right people who are a match. It'll be automatic for you. And it's okay to not want to connect with energies that are in a lower part of the scale, right? We don't lower ourselves so they can catch up and be a match to us. We just keep moving until we find matches. But like I said, it's a very robust energy that's going to have you feeling awesome. So your energy is the three of wands here. Threes are about growth, especially with career or any kind of business this can be a card of an entrepreneur. So anybody who studied, maybe studied business with the focus on being entrepreneurial, here you go. I mean, it can be though a card of waiting. So if you've been waiting on a relationship, you may have somebody too who's connected to your past in some way. Um, but I do feel like you've got a very solid relationship showing up here. So if, they, if they're if they connected, it may just be that they have a lot of similarities from the past. And with this though, you wait unbothered because you know, you wait with a knowing. So pay attention to your clairsentience. If you can feel things are happening, trust it. The biggest thing we do is deny our own damn gifts. It drives me nuts. And I've done it too, where I've said, no, no, that can't be. And then it is. And you have it, okay? I just feel that coming in through, through the cards. Well, the person you're attracting, I mentioned before, they may be very analytical, but I feel like they've, they're very tender hearted on the inside, okay? So they may have somewhat of an a, a intellectual approach to things, especially in work life, but they do it because they love people, they love humanity, and guess what, they love you. And so I do feel like you have this fun chemistry, and especially if you can be a little feisty, I feel like they have a way about them that really connects with you in a nice, easy way. I do feel like, too, they know not to push and force you into doing things. They get that about you. And you may have had somebody in the past who was that way. Even though there, there's something about their energy that connects with the emperor, I still feel like they have that that understanding of you, you know, to, that it's almost disrespectful to be doing that. However, with this, it is a card of a conquering spirit. It's a card of being in that place of really a soothing energy, a compassion through and through. And for some, in terms of a job too, you may find that you're conquering things that you didn't realize you could do. You've got new doors opening, new opportunities. 
Well, the Six of Cups brings in a very gentle, sweet, loving energy into this. Like I said, you might have somebody who's connected to your past, but they might also be just somebody who's very sentimental, or it could be you too, having sort of a sentimental energy around your relationship, saving like tickets to events that you go to, just saving little momentum, mementos, because there's something about that that's just special to you. Again, it could be them too. I do see somebody with a box where they put little things and it's just part of who they are, but it really does connect you to that energy of the Six of Cups. So the Fool comes in and you've got this brand new, fresh, clean slate. This is a card of adventure, enthusiasm. It's releasing all resistance, zero, the number zero. It's you are in the field of pure potentiality. You know who you are and you're open to the future. You're open to all possibilities. You've got doors opening. And so with this, in terms of relationship, you can't wait to know about each other. You've got a, this enthusiasm, but also this curiosity to understand each other. It's a wonderful energy for any new beginnings and really bringing in this place of going out and exploring, being in this world, but being in the place of the sunlight of the spirit. It's a wonderful Wonderful card to have in that position. Let's see what the angels have to say for you, Scorpio. I talked a little long because you've got a fantastic reading. It was easy to do. All right, let's see what else Scorpio needs to know, please. Messages. Oh, Jesus. Well, I'm going to take the one on the top. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, that was exciting. You know, I could edit that stuff out, but why would you? <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, that was awesome. Golden opportunity. Not surprised to see that coming up. We said it, didn't we? Helpful people. You're going to attract the right time, and it has to do with that sun energy. Right people at the right time. Communicate clearly, and you have take action. That was a card. That was one of them that was left. Don't stop, okay, because great things are on the way. I love you, Scorpio, and I'll be back again soon.